Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. Okay, you might see the background slightly different. I'm actually doing this from a hotel room. And today we're going to go through some IGCSE questions on using those table of values. Some of you call this sketching graphs and then using that to work out other problems as well. And quite a few requests this from the 0580 course. So let's get stuck in and let's do some questions. So First of all, we've got the classic table of values here. And what we need to do is complete the table for both these functions. So y equals 2 to the power of x and y equals 14 minus x squared. So what we need to do in order to fill out the table is wherever we see an x, we need to put these following numbers in. So 0 and 4 for the gaps here and then likewise at the bottom here. So let me show you how we do this. So if we're doing x is 0 here, so wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 0. And so we get y is equal to 2 to the power of 0. And again, you can use your calculator to work this out as well, of course. And that's equal to 1. So we pop 1 in there. And now we go to the force of this missing gap here. And now we do the same thing. So we look at our expression or equation here. Wherever we see an x, we're going to put a 4. So we do y is equal to 2 to the power of 4. Again, you can use your calculator to work this out. Remember, this means the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then that gives you 16. So we pop in 16 like so. And here we have a negative quadratic. Now, what do I mean by quadratic? Well, there's an x squared in here as well. And this is where we have to be a little bit careful with bid mass when we work these out. Right, so we're going to do the same technique that we did above. So we've got x is equal to 0. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 0. So we get y equals 14 minus 0 squared. OK, that's going to be quite nice because anything times 0 is just 0. So this becomes then just 14. So we pop 14 like so. And here we do this in a very similar way. So I'm going to copy out this expression. And wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 4 this time. So y is equal to 14 minus 4 squared. And this is where bid mass really does come in. So what we do at this point is we do the indices first. Remember, bid mass. So quick reminder on this. So we are going to do the indices, the small numbers first. Then we do the subtraction afterwards. So 4 squared is equal to 16. And 14 minus 16, that's equal to minus 2. So we pop that in to our table like so. And now this is very typical. So once they've given you a function or two functions, you need to draw the graph of it. Now remember, the scale has been done for you. So if you find a point that goes off the scale, then something probably has gone wrong. Now, what are we actually going to plot here? Well, actually, these are ordered pairs, i.e. coordinates. So this one here, for example, is 0, 1. This is going to be 1, 2. This is going to be 2, 4. You get the idea here, 3, 8, and then 4, 16. So all they want us to do here, and you can see a whopping six marks of the whole thing here, is just to plot these coordinates on the grid. Now, because we've got two functions, I'm going to do it in two colors. Let's start, of course, with 0, 1. So we have to be very careful exactly where 1 is here. I'm about halfway between 0 and 2. Remember, along the corridor up the stairs. And we've got 1, 2. Look at the scale. So 1 along and 2 upwards. And you have to be as accurate as possible with this. So 2 along. And my eyes are probably going to go very dizzy here. But we do need to be accurate. So that comes to here. Then we've got 3, 8. So 3 along. And... Just making sure I get exactly the right point here. I think it's there. Yep, I'm happy with that. And then finally, we get 4, 16. So we get 4 along and 16, which is very convenient because that's going to be the very last point here at the top. And what we now need to do is draw this up with a smooth curve. That's really, really important. So I'm going to write that on the side here. You must be joining this up with a smooth curve. This is not dot to dot, not joining up the lines here one at a time. We're going to join this up in a smooth curve. Now, I just noticed that point disappeared. That's annoying. So we're going to start here and we're going to do a smooth curve all the way through. This is more difficult to do online. Just make sure you do not lift your pen off the paper as you do this and go through all the points. If you need to do this two or three times in the exam, then by all means, please do that. So let's see if I can do this first time. Not too bad. Oh, I'm going to leave my pen off. 
Okay, but please don't do that if you're doing it at home. And that's pretty smooth. Probably not the very best uh, curve that I could draw here, but certainly not too bad. And what we're going to do now, and I'll do this in a different color, let's do this in black, is this one here. So again, we turn these into order pairs, coordinates. So we have 1, 13, 2, 10, 3, 5, and then 4 minus 2. And notice all those coordinates do fit onto the graph, so it does make sense. Right, you've got 0, 14, so along the corridor up the stairs. That's going to be here. Then along the corridor, this is 1, and then up to 13. So this is going to make me dizzy, I'm sure. This line here, and we want halfway. So I want there. Try to make sure I get exactly halfway. There we are. And then we've got 210, so two along and 10 upwards. I can just feel you all fast forwarding this bit until it's actually finished. In the exam, please be careful. So three, five. So three and then five. So that's going to be. God, I find this hard to do online. Hopefully you have more luck at home. 3, 5, and then 4 minus 2, which is a nice point to have. And again, we need that smooth curve. So get your arm ready. Make sure you've got no cramp in your arm. And then here we go. Smooth curve. Smooth curve. Okay, this is not so good. This is not so good. It needs to be smoother than this. But it's okay, it's certainly not too bad. Again, you'll see the mark scheme right at the end of this question as well. You can see it wobbled here. And you can see I did this in a one take here. Yeah? So you get, get practice at this, you rub it out, you try it again, but it should be good enough for the questions we're going to do. So <clears throat> we've drawn both functions onto the graph. And now what's very normal on these kind of questions is some kind of interpretation. So we're gonna use our graphs to solve the following equations. First of all, 2 to the power of x is equal to 12. Now notice, whenever you get a question like this, you already have a function you've already drawn. So notice we've drawn this, and we want to see when this is equal to 12. Or in other words, when y is equal to 12. Okay, this is essentially what this means. Now what does the line y equal 12 look like? Well, that is a horizontal line that goes across at 12. So you can see lots of colors here. It's gonna to go to red this time. So you want to draw a horizontal line all the way across, because we may need it later on, who knows. And what we do at this point is we want to find the intersection point. So the whole point of these questions, remember this uh, graph here, let me put this in purple again, so 2 to the power of x. And this one here, let me put that in red, is 12. This is obviously y equals 2. And then the black one that we did here, which we'll obviously use a bit later on. So this is going to be 14 minus x squared. So for this question, 2 to the power of x is equal to 12. What it's looking for is this intersection point, which I'm going to do, and do in another color. I'm going to do this in yellow. And what it wants us to do here is read off the x values. So what we're going to do is we're going to go downwards. So we're going to go downwards here. And then we're going to read off this coordinate from the graph. So we need to work out what scale this is going along in. So let's have a look at this, probably in point ones. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's going up in point ones. Makes our life easy. So 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6. So I'm reading this off to be 3.6. So then we'd write in our answer of 3.6. Now if we look at the answers here, it gives us, we don't really accurately here, between 3.5 and 3.7. This is a question I often get asked, what about if I don't get quite right, I get 3.55 or 3.5 or 3.7. You can see that you get any of the answers between these numbers. So as long as you get a number between 3.5 and 3.7, including those numbers, then you will get the entire mark there. And of course 3.6 being the best answer because it's halfway in between. This one here, we want to find when this function is equal to this function. Now we do this in a very similar way to how we did the previous question. So we want to see when the black graph, the 14 minus x squared, that's the right hand side of this equation, is equal to the left hand side of the equation, which is 2 to the power of x. So what this is saying, in other words, it wants you to actually work out where, 
they cross and then read off the x values. So I'm going to pop this down. Duh, 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 and then let's do exactly the same process here. So we've got 2.1, 2 2.2, 2 2.3, 4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. So I'm going to say that is equal to 2.7. And let's just pop that in as our answer. And we can quickly check how accurate I've been here. So 2.7. And it goes between 2.65 and 2.8. So we lie within that range. So that's absolutely fine. We still get that full mark there. Now for question D, on the grid, we need to draw the line from the point 0.42 that has a gradient of minus 4. <clears throat> so what a gradient means, remember, means the steepness of the line. And I'll show you where the minus 4 comes in a little bit later on on our graph. So steepness of line. So let's start with 4, 2. So let's find 4, 2 on here. So 4 along and 2 upwards. That's going to be here. And we need to draw that line that has a gradient of minus 4. Right. So to have a gradient of minus 4, we need to go in this direction. So this line has a negative gradient. This line has a positive gradient. And we need to go one along and four upwards. So that's essentially what a negative gradient means. So what does this look like? Well, the easiest way to do this is just go one along. Let's go one along and then go four upwards. So we start at two and we want to go to six. I'm going to put this in as a dotted line so you can see where this is coming from. So go two and then up to six like so <clears throat> and just to confirm that i'm doing this correctly i'm going to do one more point so we're going to go along one from six and you've always got a ruler in the exam so please use it and then we go upwards you get this sort of staircase idea as we go along so oh, that's quite nice it hits that point there and we'll talk about that in a moment so all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to just join up the points here and it will continue in the same direction. So again, you want to do this with a ruler. I do not have a ruler here again, but you want to keep the same gradients as you're going upwards. OK, so this needs to be done with a ruler. That wasn't the best uh, try in the world, but we are going to talk about this point where it just touches. You see, it just touches that black curve that we talked about um, earlier in this problem. So once you draw a straight line like this, and it wants you to recognize that whenever a line just touches a curve, that is called a tangent. So the straight line that we just drew is a tangent to that quadratic graph for our one mark. And then it wants us to identify the point where it just touches. And that is the point there, 210. So we just pop in 210 there. And this is really important topic, particularly if you do differentiation, which is also on the 0580 course. Again, if you haven't checked out my all of differentiation video, which goes into tangents in more detail, then please do check that out. It's just in the link above and you see it in the description below as well, where it goes through that in more detail. But today I'm just focusing on just the table of values. Right, so you can check your answers. You can see where you pick up all the marks. This is one of these topics that when it does appear, and it appears quite often on paper form, not every time, but pretty often, you can see the ton of marks you get here. 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 15 marks. For, as you can see, pretty straightforward process. It takes care, but is a straightforward process. And you need to be getting those marks to get those higher grades that you deserve. OK, and on to question seven. So we have a negative quadratic here. Y equals 10 minus 8x squared. Anything with ax squared in, we call a quadratic. And the first thing we need to do is identify the symmetry or the line of symmetry of the graph. Now, I think most of us can see this straight away. That the line down the middle would be the line that splits the curve into two equal parts. The tricky part is actually identifying the name of this line. And the way to do this is just take random coordinates on this line. So for example, here, this is the coordinate 0, 8. So 0 along and 8 upwards. This would be 0, 6. If you go down here, this would be 0, minus 2. And the way I remember this is, what do they all have in common? And they all have the x coordinate not the y, but the x-coordinate as 0. Therefore, we call this line just simply x equals 
zero, like so. So if you get confused, okay, what name do you give to a vertical line or a horizontal line? Put some coordinates in and then try and see the pattern that's going on, if you find that tricky to remember. Now on the grid opposite, when you draw the tangent, we saw, saw that word in the very first question, to the curve at the point where x is equal to 0 0.5. And once we've drawn that tangent line, then we need to find the gradient of this tangent. Now, like one of the previous questions, we do actually get a range of answers in which we are allowed to have. So as long as we draw an accurate diagram, we should get to that. Now, what do we actually need to do? Well, first of all, we identify x equals 0 0.5. So I'm going to rub out what I did before, so we've got plenty of space. So all we do is go along to 0 0.5. And we go all the way along upwards until we touch the curve, which is at 8. So that's helpful. OK. And what the question it wants us to do here is draw a straight line that just touches the curve. Now, this is obviously much easier to do here with a ruler <laughs> rather than by eye, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, but I'm going to try this. So I'm going to draw my straight line. Let's see how much success I have here. So I'm just going to touch it, just touch it, and then off I go. Okay, I think that's reasonable. It's probably not the best in the world, but certainly uh, not too bad. Now, what we do at this point is we try and use sensible points in order to work out the gradient. So what do I mean by sensible points? Well, something that's going to make our life a lot easier. Um, Notice we've got 1 here and 0. That's going to make our life a lot easier. So if I go up to 1, which hopefully my eyesight is fine. So here's at 1. This is what my tangent line is. It might be different for you at home. And what I'm going to do is make a right angle triangle from using this as the hypotenuse. Now, OK, what does that actually mean? Well, I'm going to draw a straight line across from 4. connects with that point. And then I'm going to make a triangle like this. So the way to make a great um, work out the gradient is to create a right angle triangle and to make the numbers as easy as possible for you. Now, you can do any size of triangle. I've done this quite large one because it's going to make my calculation easier later. Now, let's see why that's the case. So first of all, I'm going to identify how long this is. So the length from here from zero to one is just one. And the length from 4 to 12, that's equal to 8. So to work out the gradient of the line, so this is the M, remember it's that rise over run. Or other people use the change in Y over the change in X, or even the formula as well, which I always forget, which is why I don't use the formula. So the change in Y over change in X. Now what does that actually mean? Well, OK, we're going downwards because this line is facing downwards. Uh, so to go from 12 to 4, that's going to be negative 8. And then we've got, OK, divided by a change in x, which is just 1. So the gradient of our line is going to be equal to minus 8. And this is why I chose 1 for this length here, because it makes this calculation really, really easy to do. So, of course, I'd write this calculation, what I just did here. Um, yeah, the gradient is equal to minus 8 in this space provided here for part B. Now, if you look at the mark scheme here, uh, any answer between minus 9 and minus 6.5 is valid, as long as you've shown a method like I have for this particular question. So, well done if you got like minus 7, minus 7.5, that's probably even better. So, well done on that. But again, you have to go through these steps and make sure you're getting the method marks here as well, just in the way that I did here. So, once we've done that, then we've got another table of values question. And this is a bit more complicated. We've got a more complicated cubic function here. It's x cubed plus 3x plus 4. And we need to work out more of the gaps here. So the first thing we need to do is complete the table. Now, I actually, I'm actually going to use the calculator this time to actually work out each of these numbers. OK, so I've got a calculator here. Again, I'm just going to use the normal function here. I'm not using anything graphical calculator wise because you wouldn't be allowed to in the exam. So first thing we need to do is put minus one into here. So wherever I see a minus one, um, at x, I'm going to put a minus one. So we put bracket minus one cubed. Making sure we do this correctly. Plus three lots 
open brackets minus one, close brackets plus four, and then we get the answer of zero. We always do a double check, a sense check here. So minus one, minus three is minus four, plus four is zero. So I'm happy with that. So let's pop that in. Now we've got negative 0 0.5. So I'm going to do the same calculation here. I hopefully, don't get beeped at by my laptop. So 0 0.5. Again, we want the Q button. Just take your time with this. Yeah, just uh, make sure you're doing everything correctly and not making any mistakes. So you can see I'm just taking my time. You get three marks for this. You get plenty of time in the exam to do this. Okay, I'm getting 2.375. Let me just double check this. Okay, 2.4 better. Yeah, that's fine. I would write in the precise value, particularly something that doesn't require much rounding. And zero here, we can do a little bit of common sense because when x is zero, this disappears, this disappears, and we're left with four. So notice you don't have to always rush to your calculator with these questions. Now, on the grid opposite, and that's always a groan, particularly in the exam, because you have to turn between the two pages of your exam, draw this graph between minus 1.5 and 1.5. So let's just do this precisely. So we've got minus 1.5 and minus 3.9, uh, minus 1.5 and minus 3.9. One thing to check here is the scale. So I think it's going in point two, two, four, six, eight, seven, four, six, eight, eight. Yeah. So point twos. So just keep that in mind. So minus 1.5 and we want, there's minus 4 and we want minus 3.9. So it's going to be there. Again, try and do this as accurately as you can. We'll do this function in red. Okay, so that's minus 1.5, minus 3.9, minus 1, 0. That's nice and easy. So that goes there. <coughs> minus 0 0.5, 2.375. Again, about 2.4 basically. So it's going up in... Point two, so that's going to come here. Uh, zero four, that's nice and easy. That's here. Probably the local maximum, I'm guessing. Zero point five, five point six. On oh, okay, bad guess. So zero point five is here, and then five point six. So two, four, six, eight, five, point four, five point six. So maybe that's going to be our local maximum. Okay, or maybe not at all. And next one, one eight. That's a nice easy one to do. So one along. This is where the line from before is not very helpful. And then we get to eight. Okay, so we're getting sort of a slight bend at this point. So we've had a point of inflection. And 1.5, 11.9, Okay, it's basically at the top here. And now it's the fun part of nice smooth curve. So we're gonna do our best to do a smooth curve here. So let's see how we get on. So up we go, through we go, through a point of inflection. Uh, almost got through that one and there we are. So we do get our strange cubic function. So we get a graph that looks pretty reasonable to me. And we get four marks for that. So make sure you really do this accurately and make sure you get all those marks. And now we need to show that the values of x where the two curves intersect are the solutions to this random equation. Now, when two curves intersect, basically you make them equal to each other. So what we're saying here is that this curve, so uh, this cubic curve, so x cubed plus 3x plus 4 is equal to the quadratic right at the start. So 10 minus 8x squared. So that is what it means when they intersect, when two curves intersect. You just make the two functions equal to each other. And now we just need to rearrange this to get it in the same form that we have here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add 8x squared on both sides. And you could do this in one step if you so wish. Um, if you add, add, add 8x squared, then all we get is 8x squared. Remember, it doesn't collect with anything here. So x cubed plus 8x squared plus 3x plus 4 is equal to 10. So these two things cancels. And then finally, we just need to minus 10 from both sides. 
And if we do that, that does collect with the last term. So we get x cubed plus 8x squared plus 3x. 4 minus 10 is minus 6. And you can kind of cheat and just check with the answer that you do get what you do. And 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. So that's just a realization that when two curves intersect, one curve equals the second curve, and then a little bit of rearrangement afterwards. And I like question E. So by drawing a suitable straight line, so they're giving a kind of clue what to do here, solve this equation. And the first thing you notice here is, okay, x cubed plus 5x plus 2 is equal to 0. That's not what I had before. The equation that I had before was x cubed plus 3x plus 4. So this is what I had. I'm going to write that down what I had and what we want to get to is x cubed plus 5x plus 2. So then we have to think to ourselves okay how do I go between one and the other and probably should put the arrow the other way around here because essentially what we're trying to do here is make this one look like this and the difference between this is well we have a minus 2x, to go from 5x to 3x we have a minus 2x, and to go from 2 to 4 we just add 2. So this is an important uh, expression. I'm going to show you why this works now. So imagine I put x cubed plus 3x plus 4 is equal to minus 2x plus 2. Imagine I did that. That's essentially where the two curves intersect, and that's essentially going to solve the equation. But I can rearrange this equation uh, to make the right-hand side 0 by adding 2x and minusing 2. So if I add 2x and minus 2 on both sides, notice I get to the, quad, uh, the cubic that we're actually looking for. So we get x cubed plus 5x minus 2 on this side, and then this cancels, this cancels, and get equal to 0. So... These two things are equivalent. So if I draw this line, the minus 2x plus 2, and find the intersection points with the original cubic, then I can solve this actual different equation up on the board. So the next thing we need to do here is draw the line minus 2x plus 2. There are different ways that your teacher can teach you to actually draw this line y equals minus 2x plus 2. Now, if I've got a choice, I tend to do the so-called lazy solution. Now, what is the lazy solution? Well, I put in x is 0 to start with, and then see what I get for y. So when x is 0, that disappears. I get y is equal to 2, also known as the y-intercept. I'm sure other teachers have done that for, before for you. And I can do it the other way around. So when y is equal to 0, a bit more calculation involved, then that means that 0 is equal to minus 2x plus 2. And therefore, I can rearrange this equation very quickly to give me x is equal to 1. So I know these are two points. So zero, um, 1, 0 and 0, 2 are two points on this straight line. Let me write it in coordinates. 0, 2, and then be careful here. This is 1, 0. So if I've got a rule in the exam. All I need to do, I'll use a different color here. So here's uh, this uh, blue color. So I've got 1, 0, so let's put in point 1, 0, which is just here, and I've got 0, 2, which is this one here. And all I need to do is just join those points up and then just continue the line all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to connect these lines up best I can and then just continue all the way through. And likewise here, all you do is just continue this line all the way through, like so, and try and keep the same gradient. With a ruler, of course, this is much easier. Once you've done this, then notice this function here, this is the one that we drew, this cubic. So this red function is that x cubed, uh, what was it again, plus 3x plus 4. This uh, blue line I've just drawn is that minus 2x plus 2, the kind of cheat way of doing it. And then all we need to do is find that intersection point and then read off the x value. So let me do this in black. So I found the intersection point. And all I need to do at this point is just go down. Do, 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 do. Remember, there's only one intersection point here, by the way. And just go down and then read off that value. So I'm getting the value of, and let's just, again, 
double check the scale here. I think it's going in uh, 0 0.05 here. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.35. So I think this is minus 0 0.35. It'll be interesting to see how accurate I am here with my answer, whether I get in the particular range that they're looking for here. So my answer here is um, minus 0 0.35. Okay, oh, just squeeze in, look at that. So I drew the line in with my best skills on the computer and I got it between minus 0 0.45 to minus 0 0.35. So my answer is valid and I get all three marks for showing that there. The tricky part here is looking at this cubic and going, okay, this is not a cubic I have. How is it similar to the cubic I've already drawn? Can I use the difference in some way to actually plot it and then find some intersection points. And you can see this is an AA star question because it's taking that knowledge you already have and then just twisting it slightly as well. And if you're looking for more practice to really just know a topic really, really well, then do check out the two videos in front of you. The first one is all the differentiation you need to know for 0580. And then the one below is all about probability, really getting you up to speed for those paper two or paper four questions.